Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning. I'm the master taster of whiskey.com and today we are talking about a whiskey distillery built in crowdfunding. You know what crowdfunding is? There are some uh, websites online, Indiegogo, Crowdfunder, and there are a lot of them uh, today uh, in the net where you can offer projects and ask people in the crowd uh, to pay for it. Some are like Patreon, um, funding platforms where you do not get uh, something material or app or software, something back again. This is just donation uh, for, for a good effort, uh, for rewarding an artist for a new song and 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 the others are really efforts for products which shall be developed and uh, you pay for them and if you pay you might either get uh, the product for free first 200 products for free or you get a discount on the product uh, yeah, whatever. And there is a distillery called uh, Glen Vivis, not to uh, to mix up with Ben Vivis, which was a malt whiskey distillery on the premise of uh, Invo Garden, which was closed in, I think, 77. And the last whiskies uh, from that distillery was were sold by Signatory Vintage. They were incredibly expensive, 3000 plus. No, it's called Glen Vivis in Dingwall, and this whiskey distillery does not exist. And if you look at this bottle, no, that's not from Glen Vivis. This is a, a Galileo, uh, Art by Galileo. Uh, I found this cast too naked uh, for this <laughs> talk. Um, so this Glen Vivis is intended to be built in the upcoming years. And uh, they raised over the crowdfunder platform 1.5 million pounds for the first development of the distillery. I, for myself, have calculated a whiskey distillery. Yeah, um, and I think you need at least, if you have old houses, you need at least for the premise or for the equipment inside the distillery 3 million. That's the minimum. And then you need 10 years. And first you can sell gin, then you can uh, give the whiskey to the blenders and, and sell no age statement whiskies after three years and uh, have some cash flow, some return. And after 10 years, uh, you will go into uh, the positive. And after that 10 years, you will have a cash cow a revenue inflow incredible because the whiskey of the big distilleries are that expensive incredible expensive in no comparison to the cost because most of the whiskey price today is well covered in marketing costs and or spent in marketing costs and for bullshit jobs and whatever um, having a NAS whiskey for 80 euros or pounds on the market where you, the whiskey inside that bottle is only worth one and a half or two euros. Incredible. Difference is spent for a lot of unnecessary work and I for myself would prefer to have the whiskey uh, resting in the warehouses for 10, 15 years and then give it out without that marketing uh, blur. Uh, well, have more quality than marketing. And in the shadow of these very expensive whiskies, today on the market, a newly built distillery can have a return on investment, incredible good return on investment. Uh, knowing that, uh, there had been two efforts in the past for crowdfunded or publicly funded whiskies, 
uh, whiskey distilleries, not crowdfunded. The platforms were, weren't there in those times. The first was uh, Blackwood uh, on the Orkneys, and I traveled uh, the seas north of Scotland in 2004 with a cruise ship, and we have some Zodiacs and, and drove to the distilleries out there. It was wonderful up there. It was a 110 meter, 330 foot ship, uh, a wonderful expedition cruise uh, I had there. And all I had to pay was uh, giving two speeches uh, to the paying guests. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful. Um, yeah, and there I took a, a cab a taxi and went out on Orkney to the place where the Blackwood distillery was planned and there was, they said, a planning permission and they called for money for investors and some paid already and uh, I ringed out uh, at the address <laughs> at daytime, normal daytime. Uh, a man came out of bed, uh, had just a sweater over and, and said, well, yeah, yeah, I can show you whether it still should be built and uh, and then I saw nothing, just cheap. And then I decided, no, I will not invest uh, in Blackwood. And after a few years, they went bankrupt. So I think I never, I did not know whether there were really the intention to build that distillery. Uh, well, I think the best probably they had really the intention, but the investments were too low. The second one was Lady Bank, not to disturb with Lady Burn, which was part of the Gervin distillery complex in the uh, in the country of Ayrshire, in the southwest of the Lowlands. And this Gervin distillery was is owned by William Grant and Sons, the proprietors of Glenfiddich. And they had this Lady Bank distillery, you know, Lady Burn distillery on the premise, which was dismantled a few years ago, uh, uh, decades ago in the 70s. And the last bottles were 75, I think. And the last bottles were sold uh, extremely uh, for high prices, 1500 something. They are gone today. Uh, so the Lady Bank Distillery was planned in Fife and uh, they collected some money and this was in 2005 I think and uh, I never heard a word after 2009 about this intention and I think uh, the investors lost their money as well. Yeah, so it is really complicated to collect money uh, for whiskey distilleries or better to say, it was really complicated um, because this uh, Glen Vivis collected one and a half million pounds already. Um, the money in the past decade flew on private path, unknown or unnoticed by the public to new built distilleries. I showed a few videos lately here. Annandale in the lowlands, then a Pandaren in Wales, uh, Wolfburn, I did not have the time to, to visit them, in the very north of Scotland, Wolfburn, then uh, King's Barns in the Kingdom of Fife, uh, very close to St Andrews. Uh, and there the money was there, or uh, Daft Mill, they are running for 15 years now. I saw the building of the stills at uh, Richard Forthys in Rothes. Uh, and they're producing for 15 years now. The warehouses are full and they never sold a single bottle to the public. So they're waiting until the whiskey is really mature. And then they're able to have a big, big return of that whiskey, of that invested money. Uh, Kirchhomen, uh, Garneth, I don't know if, if they are still in the uh, planning process, uh, also in Isla. So there are, I think, over a dozen distilleries uh, coming, showing up today, um, either with the production or with the first products. 
um, and they were privately financed because the, the outcome will be that good. In the shadow of the big corporations with their extremely expensive malt whiskies, you're able to sell your individual craft whiskey with the craft distilleries um, to the public and are able to earn really a lot, a lot of money and have a return on investment in 10 years. In the beginning you sell gin, then you switch over uh, after three years and sell whiskey, an no OH statement whiskey, uh, sell whiskey to the blenders just to, to increase cash flow. And if you have enough money, you put everything you have in your warehouses because in the beginning you have to stock as much whiskey as possible to have whiskey in 12 years, in 15 years, in 30 years. When you publish the first 30 years old whiskey, you have to have stocks from the first year of production. So you need in the beginning an awful lot of money uh, to build up stocks. But if you're able to collect that money, uh, then the return will be great. Uh, the Glenvivis distillery, uh, actually planned, should be embedded locally into the community of Dingwall so that it will be easier to have, well, permissions for the building, uh, jobs for the locals, local ingredients, all what is very important today uh, for building up a brand which is local and environmental uh, safe. And uh, they also plan, I think, uh, to be uh, really green. So uh, uh, renewable energy, only renewable energy for the production. So these small craft distillery are able to take over a significant part of the whiskey business in the near future. And what I've tasted so far, like the Wolfburn or the King's Barns, the Fresh Spirit, uh, this is, well, has high potential, high potential. Uh, and I think uh, when the uh, Glenvivis distillery manages uh, to show some buildings for those first 1.5 million pounds, then I will be thinking about uh, investing also in this distillery. Until then, we have to stay with our good known whiskies like this Artbeck Galileo. Thank you for watching.